All right, everybody, this is our January 25th DraftKings Tennis Breakdown. The slate starts at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. It's the Australian Open, so it's a hard court event. All these matches will be on a hard court. Uh, just some abbreviations you'll see on the slides after this. Uh, HC stands for hard court. BRK, ADV is break advantage. You know, that's how many more or less breaks they're averaging per match. Uh, over their opponents. And then the NFWL, that's DraftKings points, not from win-loss stats. So, and that includes the 30 points that you get to start in that number. So, uh, obviously the higher the better. That means they're getting more aces, breaks, those things, less double faults. So, uh, we'll get going. All right, the first match is Ange uh $6,000 versus Kyung Wong at 8800 um, dollars Jabir's key stats... I'll just kind of explain everything as I go through this first match since this is the first video I've done. Uh, she's got a 14.3 RFS score. 20 is the highest. Uh, if you're at a 20, that means you're pretty much playing at an all-time great level. So 14.3 is her score. 20 and 16 in her 36 measured matches that we have. And our measured matches are on a year rolling basis. So this is it includes Australian from Open from last year all the way through counting this year. So... The 36 measure matches the first bullet. That's just in general, all court surfaces. So 20 and 16 in those 36 measure matches with a negative 0.03 break advantage, and she's winning 49.8% of her points. Uh, on just hard court, she's won 54% of those matches on 28 measured hard court matches with a 0.11 break advantage, 50% points won. So you can see she's better on a hard court than on the other surfaces overall. So... 46.9 DraftKings points with a 31.2 not from win loss uh, per hard court match. So just over 30, nothing too special, but not killing you. If you're significantly over 30, that's really good. If you're under 30, that's not good because you start off with 30 when the match starts. So uh, Keong Wong's key stats 13.6 on the RFS score, 26 and 19, 45 matches with a 0.34 break advantage, 51% of her points won. 63% uh, on a hard court, over 30 matches with a 0.39 break advantage, 51.3% points won. So she's a little bit better on a hard court as well. 52.1 uh, DraftKings points with a 32.4 not from win loss on a hard in, per hard court match. Um, so Kyung Wang, she has the better overall numbers, but in my opinion, Jabir has been better, a little bit better of late. And these two players, they both played, they've played twice pretty recently. Ahn Jabir massacred Kyung Wong the first time, and then Kyung Wong massacred Ahn Jabir the second time. So hard to know what to take from those two matches. Uh, you know, with the price and the discount you're getting with Jabir, I'm going to take her, and the numbers are telling me to predict her by a 0 0.3 break advantage. So it's going to be a tight match, going to be close. Obviously, either player could win, but I think with that discount you're getting on Jabir, that's a pretty good shot play. And then Ash Barty is $9,800, and she's playing Ally Risk. Ally Risk beat her at Wimbledon, um, but this is Ash Barty's home slam, so we'll see. Not, uh, Ash Barty's key stats, she's a 19.3 RFS score, 50, 56 and 13 in 69 measure matches with a 1.79 break advantage, winning over 51% of her points. And then on a hard court, Still pretty solid. Still really good, obviously. 79% of her 47 measured hardcourt matches with a 1.6 break advantage and 53.7% of points won. So not quite as good as her overall numbers. Obviously, she won the French Open, um, but still very, very solid on the hardcourt. 62.6 uh, DK points per hardcourt match with 33.2 not from win-loss. So Ash Barty, solid, solid. Uh, Ali Risk, 15.3. Is her RFS score. She's 27 and 22 in 49 measured matches with a 0 0.1 break advantage, 50.1% points won. Her hard court stats are pretty much in line with that. 53% of 34 measured matches she's won with a 0 0.07 break advantage and 50% points won. She wins a lot of close, long, extended matches. She's a battler, so she's, she's tough. She won't show up and be scared of the moment, I don't think, in Australia. She'll battle it out. Point by point, you got to win each point. Each point's a new point. So that's the thing about Iris. She doesn't, she's a top 20 player, but her stats look like she's kind of an average player, but she wins in those tough moments. So 
44.2 DK points with 29.9, not from win-loss. So you're not getting anything too special in terms of aces or anything like that from Alley Risk. But I'm going to predict that Barr's going to get redemption for that Wimbledon W or that Wimbledon loss that she took to Risk. Um, she's here. She's at home. She's going to have the crowd behind her. I think she's going to do it in a big way. Give me Barty by 2.1 breaks. Petra Kvitova versus Maria Sakari. Kvitova is 9,400. Sakari is 5,600. Uh, Kvitova's key stats, 18.2 RFS score, 37 and 15 and 52 measure matches with over 1.4 break advantage and winning over 53% of her points. Uh, won 67% of her 39 hard court matches with a 1.38 break advantage and 52.9% of points won. And then 57.2 DraftKings points per match with 30.4 not from win loss. So solid stats for Kvitova. Not quite as good on hardcore, but pretty dang close. So, uh, Maria Sakari's key stats 15.1 RFS score, 32 and 23 and 55 measure matches with a 0.4 break advantage, 51% of points won. Uh, she's won 52% of her 29 measured hardcore matches with a negative 0.14 break advantage and winning less than half of her points on a hardcore. Um, and then scoring 44.4 DraftKings points with 30.1 not from win loss on hard courts. Um, as you can tell, Sakari, she's not the strongest on a hard court. Um, honestly, those numbers are a little bit below average, but playing good players, she's she's won some matches and stuff. So she'll and she's a competitor too, so she'll show up. But Petra Kvitova has looked awesome. Her stats are awesome. She's got the stat advantage. She's got the recent form advantage. So give me Petra Kvitova by 1.65 breaks. And then we got Sophia Kennan versus Coco Goff. Kennan is $8,000 and Coco Goff is $7,000. Uh, on Kennan's key stat, she's a 16 RFS score. Um, 40, 43 and 23 and 66 measure matches with a 0.91 break advantage and winning 51.4% per, percent of her points. And she's won 67% of her heart, 49 Hard court matches with a 1.01 break advantage and 51.5% of points won. So solid numbers overall, even better on hard courts. Um, 53.7 DraftKings points with 29.7 not from win loss per hard court match. So solid DraftKings point average, but she does double double faults a little bit. She doesn't get tons and tons of breaks or tons and tons of aces. So she's not great in that regard, but as far as winning and losing, she is solid. Uh, Coco Goss key stats 14.6 RF score, RFS score, and she's 18 and 7 in 25 measured matches with a 0.59 break advantage and 51% of points won. And then on a hard court, she's won 69% of those matches, of those 16 matches, with a 0.22 break advantage and winning 50.2% of her points. Uh, Coco Goff is averaging 47.5 DraftKings points with a 28.8 not from win loss per hard court match. She's a, she does double faults a little bit. She goes big on those second serves and she doesn't get tons of breaks. She's more of a primary primary server as her main skill. So but not with enough aces to make up for those double faults. So she's a little below average on that. Both these players are in this match. And I'm predicting Goff's outstanding debut at the Aussie Open to come to an end. But I think it's going to be a great match to watch. Give me Kennan by 0.65 breaks. And then we got first of the men's matches is Fabio Fognini, 8,200, versus Tennis Sandgren, 6,800. Uh, Fabio Fognini is a 13.1 RFS score, 32 and 24 in, in his 56 measure matches with a 0 0.05 break advantage and winning 50% of his points. And then on hard courts, he's won 52% of those 31 matches with a negative 0.33 break advantage and winning. 49.7 of those points. So not great on hard courts, but he's been pretty dang good in this tournament. So 43.4 DK points with 29.8 not from win loss per hard court match. And I should also mention Fabio Fanini is a high, very highly ranked player in the world. He's primarily, he has his biggest results probably on clay, but he has played in lots of big matches. He's a big match guy. So those stats don't look great, but maybe it doesn't quite show what Fabio Fanini is. Uh, Tennis Sandgren's key stats, 11.4 RFS score, 17-19 in 36 matches 
with a negative .2 break advantage and winning 49.6% of his points. Uh, Sangren has won 33, 33% of his 21 measured hardcourt matches with a negative 0.96 break advantage and winning 48.5% of those points on hard courts. Um, 39.4 DraftKings points with a 32.1 not from win loss per hard court match. And obviously those stats do not look great for Tennis Sandgren on hard courts, and they're obviously not good at all, but he did just have a hard court title fall off of his year rolling stats, so those are not in there. And as I said the other night on the broadcast, I mean, Tennis Sandgren throughout his career, he just he gets hot and he takes advantage of it. So those stats don't look great, but that's not necessarily how he's playing right now. But still, give me Fognini by one and a half breaks. And then Roger Federer is 10-4 versus Martin Fusevich, who is 4,800. Uh, Roger Federer's key stats, he's got a 17.7 RFS score, 54 and 10 and 64 measured matches with a 1.9 break advantage, winning 54.6% of his points. On hard courts, he's winning 83% of those 41 matches with a 1.94 break advantage and 54.7% of those points. So he's above his overall season on hard courts. Uh, scoring 68.4 DraftKings points with 34.5, not from win-loss per hard court match. And then Martin Foot, so obviously Roger Federer, he's one of the all-time greats, arguably the greatest, and he's still playing very, very well, as you can see from those stats. Uh, Martin Fusevich, just key stats. He's got a 14 RFS score. He's 28 and 24 in 52 measure matches with a 0.3 break advantage, winning 50.4% of his points. And then on a hard court, he's won 61% of those matches, uh, 31 matches with a 0.45 break advantage and winning 50.8% of those points. So he is better on a hard court. He's above average on all on his overall stats, and he's even better on a hard court. So he's a tough opponent, scoring 51.2. DraftKings points with a 31.7 not from win loss per hard court match, which is solid as well. Um, there's definitely reasons that Federer could lose this match. He just played a very very long five set match against John Millman. Was came back from eight four down on the ten point tie break in the fifth set, won six points in a row. Awesome, awesome. But I mean, he's almost 40 years old, so that's going to be a question: is how is he going to recover? And then the other side of it is Fusevich has just been running through people all the way through this tournament. And so he's looked fantastic in this tournament, but I'm still going with the numbers and the skill of Roger Federer. There's just something about him in this tournament. I think he's going to go far. I think he's got a good chance to win the whole thing. So give me Federer by 2.6 breaks. And then we've got Milos Raonic, who is $8,600, versus Marin Cilic, who is $6,400. Milos Raonic, 14.8 RFS score, 23-11 23-11 and 11 in 34 measure matches with a 1.01 break advantage, which is higher than you'd think for a guy that you'd think plays as many tie breaks as he does with his serve ability. But that's that's good. 1.01 break advantage, 53.2% of points won. Uh, he's won 63% of his 24 measured hardcourt matches with a 0.8 break advantage, 52.8% of those points won. Uh, those are obviously great. Very, very solid stats for Milos Raonic. The only thing to look at is just it's not a ton of matches for someone that's always ranked as high as him. He just has struggled with injury, but he looks healthy right now. So he's averaging 59.8 DK points with 35.7 not from win loss per hard court match. That's obviously really high because of his ace ability. Uh, Marin Cilic's key stats, 14.2 RFS score, 27-20 and in 47 measured matches with a 0.2 break advantage. 51% of points won. And then on hard court, 34 matches, winning 59% of those with a 0.27 break advantage and 50.9% of points won. And he's averaging 50 DraftKings points with 31.3, not from win loss per hard court match. Uh, those stats are all right looking for Chilich. He had kind of a tough year, really and truly. Um, but he's looked like he's rebounded a little bit. I mean, he's a former top 10 player, has won this tournament before. So. Very good player, not so great 2019, but on a limited sample side this year, looking like he's somewhat back to normal. So just know he has the ability to be a little bit better than those stats. And then Chilich, uh, he did have to bring the trainer out in his last match against uh, Roberto Bautista. So keep an eye on that before slate locks. Um, 
assuming that he's healthy, I mean, I think we kind of have to since he ended up winning that match. I mean, assuming that he's healthy, but you, you do still have to take into account he's played some five setters in this tournament. And I mean, who knows what he's like, what kind of shape he's in physically, but assuming he's close to fully healthy, I'll take roundage by 0 0.5 breaks. It could be worse than that if Chilich ends up not being healthy. But I mean, if he is healthy, I mean, that's for that price. I mean, he's someone to at least consider. Um, but that's a little bit of injury, and the five setters kind of does scare me on it. On Jabir makes me feel a little bit better. And then we got Novak Djokovic at 11,000 versus Diego Schwartzman for 4,000. Novak Djokovic's key stats 18.4 RFS score, 62 and 9 record in 71 measured matches with over a two break advantage per match, winning 55.6% of those points, dominant. Won 87% of 46 measured hardcourt matches with a 2.16 break advantage and 56.2% of points won. So he's even better on a hardcourt, averaging 70 DraftKings points with 33.2 not from win-loss per hardcourt match. Those stats are awesome, obviously. Uh, Diego Schwarzman's key stats, 14.9 RFS score, 44-27 and 27 record in 71 measured matches with a 0 0.76 break advantage and winning 51.8% of his points. And he's won 60% of his 42 hard court matches with a 0 0.9 break advantage and 52% of those points won. And then Schwartzman's averaging 52.6. DraftKings points with 30.7, not from win loss per hard court match. Those are solid numbers too. And he has been awesome so far in this tournament. He's been running through people as well. And, but I mean, I still, I've got to predict that that road ends here with the Joker looking as locked in. I mean, looking locked in per usual. I mean, he's he's obviously an all-time great, and he's playing like it. So Djokovic by 2.5 breaks in that match. And I believe that's the last one. Yes, it is. Uh, we're sponsored by Ranked Fantasy Sports. Check us out on a seven-day free trial. You can, find a cool, you can find a full complement of all those stats I was talking about, plus more, plus exact DraftKings point projections, value rankings, all that good stuff. You get a seven-day free trial, and it's only $9.99 a month after it. And that includes daily projections and cheat sheets for tennis, golf, NFL, NCAA football, NBA, and NCAA basketball during March Madness. Uh, we want to be the easiest place to come that you can find info that you can use to play the DFS you love if you don't have the time in your day-to-day -day and have the edge in those sports. If you don't have the time in your day-to-day -to, -day to have the edge in those sports. Like I used to work a 14-hour a day job, and during those times I, I've always loved to play fantasy sports, and I kept playing, but I just did not have the time to have the edge. So uh, if you enjoyed this, that's what we want to do with Ranked Fantasy Sports. We just want to be a place where if you don't have the time, we have the time. It's easy, easy to understand, make a